Indie Office Podcast. Today brought to you by Hase Trek featuring Joy W. Stay chill. Welcome to the Indie Authors Podcast. Today we have an author, entrepreneur. Uh, you you say it, she's done it. Uh, we have Joy W. sharing her experience with us today. Um, so Joy, um, I like to get right into it. I just want to know where you grew up at, at, and uh, you know what what city, what state, you know what town, like where where'd you grow up? Okay. Before we get into that, I would be remiss if I don't say thank you so much for allowing me to be on your show. It's an honor um, because you are a true king. And like, whenever you speak, it's like, you better come correct because it's always, it's always something very wisdom-like and knowledgeable. So shout outs to you. Thank you. Um, And so I was born and raised in Jersey City. And, um, you know, it was a great upbringing. My parents definitely did what parents are supposed to do, which is to take care and try to, you know, instill values in children. So I'm thankful. Uh, Were there ups and downs? Of course, you know, all of our perspectives were different and, you know, we weren't taught to like appreciate each other's perspectives and think about, you know, the, the idea that, you know, maybe a child may have a point. So you know, it was a good upbringing either way because I am disciplined in certain areas of my life because of my parents. So I'll never be ungrateful for that, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's excellent. Jersey City, stand up, you know? I'm from Jersey, Newark, so stand up. <laughs> um, what were some of your interests growing up? I was always interested in being an actress. That was like my number one thing. Um, and then my parents were like, you need to have a backup plan. And I was like, I don't have one. I just want to be an actress. Mm -hmm. That's like truly what I always wanted to do. And, um, when that pretty much was just like, okay, think about something. And I said, fine, I wanted to do business because I felt like business was probably the easiest thing. You didn't, didn't require too much of your effort to Mm -hmm. be in business, um, Mm -hmm. which is a lie, (laughs) but (laughs) At that time, when you're little, you think, oh, business seems easy because being a teacher, you have to like really go to school and teach people from curriculums. Mm-hmm. But a business person, it seemed like, well, you don't really need a, 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 a map. You can see what was laid out, the foundations that were laid out, but there's no real map. Mm-hmm. You can go either direction. So I figured I'll do that. And um, I wanted to build hotels. And um, I had... I had a hotel line that I wanted to do and everything. So maybe one day, but right now that's not one of the priorities. Awesome. Awesome. So business, right? It's funny. You see, you manifested that. We'll get into that in a little bit too. Um, Mm -hmm. How did you develop uh, or where did you get the inspiration or what books inspired you, shall I say? to want to, before you got into your passion to write and become an author and put your own works out there, what what inspired you? What books uh, got you to get to that place where you thought that it was something that you could do? Like, I never thought I would be an author. That's very interesting. I never, ever, ever, that was not, not even in my life plan because business, in business, like, you don't necessarily do writing, but there are a lot of business people who have come up with books. But one book that my cousin introduced me to was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I was introduced to that book when I was in um, high school, pretty much. And from that, I kind of understood business a little more. And I knew all about LLCs and sole proprietorships and S-Corps and C-Corps. I knew about that because I read the book. Mm -hmm. But fast forward to how I became an author, it was all like a challenge for me. I was just simply getting my hair done. We were watching um, Queen Sugar. Mm -hmm. um, And I don't watch TV. So when I got my hair done, that was my TV time, you know? So, (laughs) and we were binge watching that. And the woman was just like, you know, there should be more women of color who write books so our young girls have something else outside of just, um, you know, using music and acting as a way of 
being proud of doing something. And I say, well, I'm not an author. Like I did not go to school to be an author or a writer. Mm-hmm. And I said, I, you know, I didn't know if that was something that could be accepted ever in the writer's world, but do I care? Not really, <laughs> you know, of <course> not. but <laughs> I, um, I ended up at that time. I had already had a year's worth of quotes that I had been posting on inspir- on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And it was like the, the algorithm. And that's a, a quick little story behind that. Why I posted quotes. I had run into the social media guy and he said at the time to do one quote and two pictures. Well, it turned out I was doing three quotes in one picture every day. So seven mm-hmm. days a week. So I had enough um, original quotes to be able to, you know, put in a few collections of books. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's pretty much the story of how that was. So I never, and to this day, I'm still like, dad, girl, you're an author. And not only are you an author, but you're self-published. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, to anyone who's watching this, if you feel like it's taking too long for the corporations to get your work out, do it yourself. Absolutely. Just Absolutely. do it yourself. You know? Mm-hmm. I agree with you. I think it's important to at least take a chance on you, definitely. A uh, corporation is not going to bank on you like that. Sometimes you get the opportunity. I know Nate uh, Jarrell spoke about this too. Like they'll make you wait. They'll shelve you for a while. You might not get your opportunity. So you got to create it yourself. You know, I think that's definitely vital. Um, When did you start your writing uh, to get to your book? Like when did you start your writing process that ultimately led to the book? Um, It was just everyday quotes. <laughs> I uh, I would allow um, God, my maker, creator, whatever you guys want to call it, to like influence me in different words to say. And I became more confident when I saw like more people were actually interacting in my Instagrams. Mm-hmm. And I had always Church. felt like it had to be original because as a business, I was afraid that someone would come back and say, you stole my work. Now I'm trying to sue you. Mm. So it, that's why it always had to be original and why it was easy to transition into having a book and knowing that the likeliness of any of my quotes being um, something that would be a copyright infringement was zero. So it, it's just it's just amazing how your life goes like the things that you don't accept. I, like I said, I never intended to be an author. I was just doing this to help boost the business. Mm-hmm. And because I was so adamant about it being original, mm-hmm. it was easy to be like, okay, I could use this and put it here mm-hmm. and then put it out there. Yeah. You know, cause again, I took what she said as a challenge. Don't mm-hmm. be challenging me. Whether she knew it or not, I took it as a challenge. And that's why I have books now. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> um, I want to ask you, uh, like when, what, what year or what time period did you begin your, writing your quotes? Was it, you know, a couple years ago, recently? Like when it did was you? 2018. It was 2018. I, I published October of 2018. Okay. After I had gotten all of, um, you know, after I had submitted everything to be in copyright, to copyright everything when I did the submission mm-hmm. and to get the book cover. Um, I did the book cover myself for my first book because I just was rushing to get it out because I was just excited. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was just excited. I, I was like, I can't believe I'm doing this. Are you serious? There's going to be people at, that are going to read what I have to say and may like it. I was like, what? Mm-hmm. So all of that excitement was going on. And next thing you know, it was for real. That's, you a, good know? Point. That's a good point that you just said. Because now I want to ask you, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, you're good. The thing I want to talk to you about was what was your fear level in putting it out? And how did how did you, if you did have any fear, how did you overcome the fear of putting out your book? I only became fearful when it was actually you know, when it actually came and I was like, now I'm nervous about selling it because it's like, what are people going to think? 
Now, remember, I was posting these quotes on Instagram, so I pretty much knew that, you know, people liked it. But to actually have it like that in a paperback where somebody could take it home and read it and then maybe someone else from their home reads it and then just know that it's a part of you is now simulated in someone's life somewhere Mm -hmm. and it's somewhere in their home. Some people have, you know, testimonies where they say they, you know, they have lots of, um, what do you know, tags in their books. Mm -hmm. I remember it was so funny. This one girl, she, I gave her a book because she did something for me and Mm -hmm. she said her mom got a hold of the book, right? Mm -hmm. Because she saw it just sitting in her house and she sent a picture of how many pages that her mom had put tabs in. And it was like tab after tab after tab. It was the whole thing. I was like, oh my goodness. Yes. You know, that that that's what that's what the fearful part is, is like, and then like another fearful thing is like making sure that you're grammatically correct mm-hmm. and that the spelling er- that spelling errors are not there. You know, I did get it edited, but it's still always stuff still gets, you know, slips by. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's just I'll never I still will never um, get used to the idea that I'm an author. Your and fish. not just one time, but like five times over, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. within a within a three year period. Mm-hmm. I did my first book in um, October 18. Then I published in 19. Then I, like the winter of 19, then the summer of 19, mm-hmm. then like the winter of 20. And And what I will say, though, when I did publish, I was like, I'm not doing a traditional route where, you know, like let the book simmer a little bit so people can catch on and buy. I didn't do that. I just put it out there. Yeah. And I was, that was the one thing marketing wise that I was probably very, very like, very bad at. <laughs> you, you didn't create the, uh, the anticipation prior to, to eventually get to the release. I get what you mean. You nope. know, I did the same pro I did the same thing too. I just was, I know the feelings when you talk about those feelings of just being somewhat anxious and wanting to complete the project, because, you know, once you complete the project, the weight of the project is off your back because no one really understands the process that it takes to do this. You know, it's very intricate. It takes a while. It, you go through your own mental process in the midst of it. you got other responsibilities. So it's, it's a huge process. And then to get to the finalization and to solidify it, it's like you could breathe now, you know. But then the next step is, like you said, getting it out to the world, which sometimes could cause anxiety to people. But what I've come to realize with like writing, and I'm pretty sure you realize this too, when you do put your work out there, you realize there were more people that could relate to it than that, that oppose the work. You realize like, man... I feel good putting it out now because I realized the relationship that I created, you know, and that people actually can't understand what whatever I put out there. But I'm gonna ask you this. Motiv- motivational quotes, right? Yes. Right? How do you what made you do that? Because I know you said Robert Kiyosaki, you did rich rich dad, poor dad, which I feel like it ties into motivation, right? Mm-hmm. Like how was that like a sense of uh I want to say, uh, like almost like a reference piece for you to create the book, like having this idea ideology of like inspiration, motivation, and wanting to create a betterment for people. Nope, that wasn't nope. it at all. I mean, it was based off of the guy. Remember, I was telling you the guy was saying the algorithm for Instagram at the time was mm-hmm. you do one quote and two pictures. Mm-hmm. And so that was the motivation to actually write quotes. And the challenge in creating something original Mm -hmm. was what pushed me even more. And when I was getting the different responses from people, it was just like, okay, you feel that, right? Mm -hmm. And then like, I had turned off the TV too, right? The TV Mm -hmm. was off. So every thought that was crossing my mind, I was just typing it down, Mm -hmm. typing it down not realizing that eventually it was going to go into a paperback. I was just doing it for the algorithm. Mm -hmm. I was doing it to try to get 
my business or try to get Be The Difference clothing more recognized in the algorithm. That was the motivation. Okay. And then when I ran into this woman, I said, I'm not an author. Tradi- traditionally, I am not an author. I did not go to school for writing. I didn't do any of that. So I, that was where I was just like, like I, I, I hope I don't step on the toes of other writers who do this in college and then you know Mm -hmm. and I was that's where it was kind of like you know this is this is a platform where you probably don't deserve it but because Mm -hmm. you allowed God to make a creator to speak through you Mm -hmm. that's how you got the reward Mm -hmm. and I'll tell you this one quick story and when you were talking about people relating Mm -hmm. um I was at an event recently and this woman, she was look, she just opened the book and it hit, it was a quote that made her cry. Mm. And I was just sitting there like, dang, whatever I said because of what was going on, maybe around that time, she never showed me the quote, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. Or something that I would, that God, my maker creator gave to me is now affecting her. It just reminds me of how connected we all are as humans, regardless of how far apart we are, mm-hmm. literally. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. just to see that she bought the book, but she was like, I didn't come here to cry. But she literally was crying. And mm-hmm. I just, it just was like, dang, that was dope. It made a difference in someone's life. And that's the purpose of Be the Difference Clothing. That's the purpose of these quotes. And you know, it's also healing too in certain ways because I got to some of the things that I was saying, I was actually going through. And just to write it out there, regardless of whether anybody agreed with it or not, it's like I had to write. Once again, thanks to Joy W for being a guest on the Indie Authors Podcast. And if you enjoyed this video, also stay tuned for part two releasing this week. Don't forget to stay connected on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Stay chill.